May 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 13 from the New Testament. Now there were these prophets and teachers in the church at Antioch, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius the Cyrenian, Manian, a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch from childhood, and Saul. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after they had fasted and prayed and placed their hands on them, they sent them off. So Barnabas and Saul, sent out by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they began to proclaim the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. Now they also had John as their assistant. When they had crossed over the whole island as far as Paphos, they found a magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. The proconsul summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. But the magician, Elymas, for that is the way his name is translated, opposed them, trying to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, stared straight at him and said, You who are full of all deceit and all wrongdoing, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? Now look, the hand of the Lord is against you and you will be blind, unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately, mistiness and darkness came over him and he went around seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then, when the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, because he was greatly astounded at the teaching about the Lord. Then Paul and his companions put out to sea from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia, but John left them and returned to Jerusalem. Moving on from Perga, they arrived at Pisidian Antioch, and on the Sabbath day they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent them a message, saying, Brothers, if you have any message of exhortation for the people, speak it. So Paul stood up, gestured with his hand, and said, Men of Israel and you Gentiles who fear God, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and made the people great during their stay as foreigners in the country of Egypt, and with uplifted arm he led them out of it. For a period of about forty years he put up with them in the wilderness. After he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave his people their land as an inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin who ruled for 40 years. After removing him, God raised up David, their king. He testified about him. I have found David, the son of Jesse, to be a man after my heart who will accomplish everything I want him to do. From the descendants of this man, God brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus, just as he promised. Before Jesus arrived, John had proclaimed a baptism for repentance to all the people of Israel. But while John was completing his mission, he said repeatedly, What do you think I am? I am not he. But look, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the sandals on his feet. Brothers, descendants of Abraham's family, and those Gentiles among you who fear God, the message of this salvation has been sent to us. For the people who live in Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize him, and they fulfilled the sayings of the prophets that are read every Sabbath by condemning him. Though they found no basis for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had accomplished everything that was written about him, they took him down from the cross and placed him in a tomb. 
but God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had accompanied him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses to the people, and we proclaim to you the good news about the promise to our ancestors, that this promise God has fulfilled to us, their children, by raising Jesus, as also it is written in the second psalm. You are my son, today I have fathered you. But regarding the fact that he has raised Jesus from the dead, never again to be in a state of decay, God has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and trustworthy promises made to David. Therefore, he also says in another psalm, You will not permit your Holy One to experience decay. For David, after he had served God's purpose in his own generation, died, was buried with his ancestors, and experienced decay. But the one whom God raised up did not experience decay. Therefore, let it be known to you, brothers, that through this one forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and by this one, everyone who believes is justified from everything from which the law of Moses could not justify you. Watch out then, that what is spoken about by the prophets does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, be amazed and perish, for I am doing a work in your days, a work you would never believe, even if someone tells you. As Paul and Barnabas were going out, the people were urging them to speak about these things on the next Sabbath. When the meeting of the synagogue had broken up, many of the Jews and God-fearing proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who were speaking with them and were persuading them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city assembled together to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and they began to contradict what Paul was saying by reviling him. Both Paul and Barnabas replied courageously, It was necessary to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we are turning to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have appointed you to be a light for the Gentiles, to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they began to rejoice and praise the word of the Lord, and all who had been appointed for eternal life believed. So the word of the Lord was spreading through the entire region. But the Jews incited the God-fearing women of high social standing, and the prominent men of the city stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and threw them out of the region. So after they shook the dust off their feet in protest against them, they went to Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. God, I find it interesting that Paul and Barnabas replied to the Jews who were trying to throw them out of the city. It was necessary to speak the word of God to you first, since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. We are turning to the Gentiles. And I think about that a lot, how Paul and Barnabas stated that, that they didn't consider themselves worthy of eternal life, which caused the jealousy, which caused Paul and Barnabas to uh, end up turning to the Gentiles and eventually leaving that city. And then I think about the, the people in the United States and the people in other countries who aren't accepting the gift of eternal life, the gift of forgiveness from you. And I wonder if, if it's that for them as well, that they don't consider themselves worthy, that why would a God, a sovereign God, um, forgive somebody like me? Don't you understand what I've done in this life? And for that, my, my heart breaks. If you, my beautiful, kind, grace-filled God, can forgive someone like me, I know that all sins are able to be forgiven through you, through your son's death on the cross. God, today I just pray for the people who 
who don't think that they're worthy of your love, your forgiveness, your attention, your grace. God, my heart just breaks that they wouldn't realize that your arms are just spread wide open and you're waiting for them. Waiting for them to experience a peace unlike anything they've experienced before. A love like they've never experienced before. And it doesn't even take some huge grand gesture on their part to start that relationship. All they have to do is say, God, I'm not too sure about what all this looks like, but can you show me? And I know you. I know you'll start to show them. And you'll start to put people in their lives and situations will happen. And it will be awesome. But how sad that the world has told them that they're not worthy for someone like you, God. Their king. I love you. And I thank you for your forgiveness of me and the mess of a life I have created. There are many days where I still don't feel worthy of the attention and love that you've given me, much less the forgiveness, but I am so thankful for it. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>